Typical construction bid documents include, and then we have a couple different possibilities, A, construction drawings and specifications, B, the instruments of service, C, construction drawings and the project manual, including addenda, D, all of the above. Uh, I, I put this in, it's, it's a little bit of a tricky question, um, so apologies. Uh, um, I, my understanding is that NCARB has decided to get rid of and doesn't do all of the above questions anymore. Um, so this is not a great example of the exact kind of question that you would get. But I wanted to do this because I wanted you to start thinking about the kind of accretion of information. Uh, so that's why I wanted to put it in, in, in this context. So I just wanted to be clear that you, you won't likely get a lot of ones like this. Um, so construction bid documents. First of all, when do the bid documents happen? Um, so a typical project, you've got the sort of starting point, right? And then you go through SD. And then you go through DD, so that's schematic design and design development. And then you get to CDs. Uh, and then there's a bidding phase. And then you have the construction administration phase. And then there's sort of a kind of end game of various warranties and other issues that things that happen at the end. Um, so when you look at the contracts, the contracts will all have these uh, five main categories built in. And you don't have to do all of them. There's certainly some. Uh, contracts in certain situations, the owners will say, yeah, we, we, you know, we'll be fine with the construction. We don't need you for that part. Or uh, you, you know, we, we already have somebody who's done the schematic design. Now we just want you to do the DD and CD. Like, those things happen all the time. But the standard is you're going to do all five of these plus the beginning and the end. So then the question is, well, what happens at each of those phases? Uh, so in the beginning, before you even get to SD, you're you know, signing a contract with the, with the owner. You're determining with the owner what the project delivery method is going to be because you, can't, you have to choose a contract that fits to that. So that has to be decided first. There's going to be an overall project budget. So one of the things you're going to do in that very beginning is you're going to kind of figure out what kind of budget do we have. If, if they say, uh, you know, we've got a million dollars to spend on this project, well, you have to spend a little time before you even really start doing any work. Well, how big a project is that? And what does the million dollars cover? Is that a million dollars in construction? Or is that a million dollars uh, for the overall, including buying property and buying furniture and paying for the lawyers and paying for the architect? Right? So understanding the budget, what it really means, kind of understanding the scale that is likely to come out. So using kind of comparative numbers to other projects you've done, or maybe square footage costs get a sense of scale. So you haven't even done any real work yet, but you've started to sort of already think about cost and scale and how all that works. And then when I get to schematic design, I'm going to be thinking about what are, what are the big picture ideas? So I've got a program, I've got a survey, and I've got some geotechnical information, and I've got some environmental information uh, from the owner. They hand me all of that information, and I take that information and start uh, thinking about, well, Given the survey, given this location, given the, what I know about urban and architectural issues, uh, I'm going to take this program and think of it in these ways. So it's big picture, schematic, abstract ideas. Now, these days, a lot of the time, those abstract ideas end up being 3D models. It's a little confusing because the contracts don't really work all that well with the 3D model kind of uh, schematic design thing, but it's, that is definitely what's happening. So the ship has sailed, but um, just know that it might be a little different from the way that you, in everyday practice, do things, the way that the exam and the way the exams talk about it, um, the contracts, I mean, talk about it. So that SD phase, the concept there is big picture, uh, bold ideas, you know, uh, how is the overall thing going to work? And then you'd get a sign off at the end of that from the owner. And part of putting that together is, you did a sort of general idea of how much space you can build because of the, of the budget. You're going to do another cost estimate, still a very generalized cost estimate, but you're going to do another one at SD. Because uh, you want to make sure that you haven't let it slip and get bigger or creep and become a project that isn't going to be doable by the owner because there's, you know, there's no reason to keep going on a project if they can't afford it. So then you're moving into DD, design development. And this is truly, you're just a, a one of the SD um, options has been chosen, 
And now you're moving forward and you're developing that de design. So when you get to the end of DD, you should have a very clear actual design. All the materials should be pretty well understood. Uh, the shapes and sizes of all the rooms should be understood. The uh, general, like which walls are two hour walls, which uh, walls are one hour walls in terms of fire rating and egress and uh, what kind of uh, stairwells are things? How is the whole thing sort of working? So you've moved from these sort of abstract ideas of schematic and now you're into the actual, like what is it actually? But both SD and DD are still pretty much, you're, you're having your conversation with the owner. And so they're kind of presentation style uh, drawings. Now DD tends to look, you're sort of moving into CD, so it's a little different. But essentially SD and DD are conversations with the owner. CDs, the uh, CD moment, that particular moment is now you're changing focus. Now you've had your conversation with the owner and they've signed off at the end of DD. And so now you're having your conversation with whoever the eventual general contractor is. You're having your conversation with bidders. You're having your conversation with code officials and permitting officials. Uh, and so there's a whole different focus on that. And I want to just sort of focus on the term CDs. So a lot of people will say construction drawings, uh, that's what that phase is. Uh, there's a couple of other CD terms. The actual term there is contract documents. And the reason that's important is it kind of puts, it sort of highlights what's actually going on. When you're doing your work by the end of DD, what you're really preparing once you've gone from DD into that CD phase, that contract document phase, is you are creating the contract between two other people. If you imagine a contractor is going to say to an owner, say, yeah, I can build this building for $5 million for you. Well, what building? What, what are they committing to? The only way that contract makes any sense is that your drawings are part of the contract. So they're saying, I'm going to build this building drawn on this date by this architect, and I'm going to label all that in the contract. And then the owner says, awesome, $5 million, great, let's move forward. We now know we we're speaking the same language. It's apples to apples. The owner knows what the contractor's bid is going to get them. So you are creating their conversation, their contract. And so it's a legal document in all sorts of interesting uh, other ways. All of it is legal. You know, you're, you have a contract to do certain work. So the SD and DD all has legal aspects. But the CD set, the contract document phase is really this sort of legal understanding. Um, and then once you're done with that, you're going to bid it out. This isn't a standard design bid build setup. If it doesn't say a project delivery, then you should assume design bid build. If it's about design build or about some other project delivery method, it'll say that specifically. Uh, so I get to the bidding phase and actually as the architect, I have quite a lot of work to do. I have to present to all the different bidders I have to give them the construction drawings. I have to give them the project manual. I have to give them uh, a bunch of other information. And the other stuff that you're giving them is uh, this uh, set of like bid documents. Uh, and the bid documents are going to be like, let's say that $5 million project I just mentioned, let's say you're going to uh, hand a, you know, to five bidders. And you're going to have this drawings for a $5 million project. You're going to hand that over. Well, as you hand over that, uh, that project, like, are you just expecting them to give you a sheet of paper that says uh, 5,100,000 or 400, uh, or 4,950,000? Like, that would be good to have those numbers, but that's not the full conversation. So the whole bidding period, the architect actually has quite a lot of work. And what they're doing is they're creating the conversation that you're gonna, you're getting, you're figuring out what information you need from the contractors in order to have the right conversation with the owner in order to be able to figure out, first of all, who should be chosen and become the GC, but also to craft the final version of the project. Almost no project uh, looks exactly like what the bid documents look like when you first put them out because you get information back and now we decide because of the way we've crafted the bid documents, well, we can't afford the east wing, so we're going to do everything else but not the east wing. Or we can't afford the terrazzo floor, so we're going to go with vinyl tile or whatever it is. So we've asked specific information in our bid documents. So the bid documents 
have a very key sort of pride of place because that's how you're going to get the correct information back uh, so that you can judge from one to the other. So uh, then once you've chosen a bidder, now you've, cho you've chosen them, they become the general contractor, they sign a contract with the owner, uh, and then it's now their job to sort of build out that uh, design intent that you created and make it manifest, to make it real. So your job through all of this is ideas, decision-making, design intent. You're figuring out from the program what they need, how is it going to work, how is the exiting going to work. You're looking at codes, you're, you're thinking about it, it's design. The general contractor is now going to make it, right? And so their contracts are very different from each other. They look really similar, but they're very different from each other. Uh, because their thing is about conforming to the making of it. Your thing is about, did you make the right decisions? Um, so, okay, that leads us back to this whole concept here, the A, B, C, and D. Uh, and the one that's going to be the important thing here, the sort of tricky part here, so again, apologies, uh, B, instruments of service. Uh, what an instruments of service is, is everything that you as the architect produce on a project. So you have a bunch of memos that you've gone back and forth with on the owner about something. You maybe have done research about a building material and you've got a Excel sheet that shows costs and different uh, positives and negatives or something like that. You've got sketches that you've done. Well, those are things, uh, including also the instrument service, uh, would also be the construction drawings and the project manuals and the specifications and all of that stuff. It's all the work that you've done. But you're not going to give all of those memos and those Excel sheets and some of those early sketches, you're not going to give those to the contractor, right? Those are things, the reason that the instruments of service is an important concept is that when you sign that contract with the owner, they have rights to all of your instruments of service for this project. Not for another project, not for the next project, but for this project, they have rights to all of those instruments of service, not just the construction drawings, not just the, the specification, not just the big sort of fancy packages, but all of that work. And if they ask for it, which it's pretty rare, they're not likely to ask for all your memos and, and all of that, but it does happen, and there are reasons why they might want it, legal reasons, or if the uh, relationship goes south and they want to break the, the contract and go work with somebody else, they want to have all that information that they've already paid for and be able to get going as fast as they can with the other things. So the instruments of service is not the correct answer because that's a bigger category of work and it doesn't make sense in the context of the bid documents. So that means B and D are not the correct answer. So then the question is, is it A or C? And the sort of thing to remember here is I have a set of drawings. Um, and that set of drawings, uh, you know, I've got a whole bunch of different uh, sheets. Uh, there's the architectural sheets, there's the structural sheets, there's the engineers, there's all of that. And then I have the project manual, and the project manual is going to have all of the specifications um, that are going to be, uh, you know, the, the 1 through 16 divisions. Uh, so I've got the uh, 3, the concrete, the 4, the masonry, 5, the metals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the things about, all that detail information about warranties and, in, and installation and all of that. So the specifications. But I also have a whole series of bid documents like we were just talking about, right? And those bid documents are going to be like a first letter that's going to be like an invitation to bid. Then there's going to be the form that you want the bid to come back on. Then there's going to be some other information about the, the site that's going to be important uh, that they need to know. Uh, then I'm going to have, uh, actually before I get to the specifications, I'm going to have uh, the general conditions and the supplementary conditions. So that's all the stuff that starts talking about, well, who's paying for the electrical during the construction? And uh, do we have to have a, a porta john on the site? Uh, how does it get cleaned up? How does, you know, how's that going to work? All those sort of general things that don't have another place to go. You wouldn't put them on the drawings. You wouldn't put them in the specification directly. So all of that stuff is how uh, the, the overall bid package is going to work. So I'm going to have the drawings. Um, 
sorry, hang on a sec here. I'm gonna I'm gonna have the drawings in uh, this one section. I'm gonna have the project manual, which is the bid documents, the general and supplementary conditions, the contracts. Even though they're not signed yet, I have all of that information all in that upfront section, and then I get to the specifications. So here's the drawings. Uh, and then the project manual, manual, which includes the specification. But there's another thing that still can be part of that bid document. There are bound to be questions that you're going to get through the process of the bidding. So somebody's going to look at something and they're going to find a mistake and they're going to call you up and they're going to say, hey, on uh, sheet A4 it says this, but it says something different on the detail on sheet uh, uh, A7.1. And your immediate feeling is you should just answer the question. It's like, oh yeah, we made the change. Sorry, we missed that. The one on A7.1 is correct. You should never do that, right? Uh, in that context, you never actually answer the question. What you do is you take notes, you keep track of the notes. As you get a few questions, now you're gonna put out the addenda, right? So that's the addenda that's being talked about right there. Uh, and the addenda is all right, here's a list of five questions that we've got. Here's the answers to those questions. It might be yes or no. It might be a more lengthy discussion. It might be a sketch. It might be a re, uh, resubmitting of, of some of the sheets. Uh, depends on, on how important and how big the question is. Uh, but the, by the time you get to the end of the bid process, the addenda is now part, and it might be multiple addendas, um, it is now part of the overall bid package. So we've got the construction documents in terms of the drawing, and we've got the construction uh, contract documents in terms of the uh, project manual, which includes uh, all the general conditions, the contracts, the bid information, and the specifications. And then we also have the addenda. And that whole package is the bid package. So C. Yikes, you knocked about like 100 people. Yeah, that, that like I said, that was a, it was a bit of a cheap uh, question. I apologize again. <laughs> the reason I did that is I wanted to sort of try to trick you into thinking it was accumulating, uh, and it is, but then there's a point where it stops. And so that was the, so yep. it was meant to be a conversation. So thanks for putting up with that. <laughs>